Hello and welcome back to the Reapers and they've done it they finally got me in a Focke Wolf 190 Delta 9 Dora um, so today we're going to first look at the cockpit do the cockpit tour what we're going to do is going to start on the back left here work through all of the knobs and buttons and see what they all do across here and all the way back down to the right before we do that let's get a quick overview let's have an external look at the bird okay so it's actually quite impressive to look at I think it's relatively big for a warbird um, now it looks the front um, because it's got a circular cowling I always thought it was a um, a radial engine now it's not is it? It's a V12 isn't it Stahl? Yeah the earlier short nose versions of the Focke Wolf were radial but that's, that's not Roger. The only thing is they've kind of got the worst, I'm uh, going to drag this video out by saying this, but they've kind of got the worst of both worlds. They've got the drag associated with the big uh, circular radiator cowling of the radial and then small tiny little v12 tucked in between it i would have thought they would have changed uh, that's calories. what a lot of people were afraid of but this engine is very powerful and this thing was one of the best warbirds back in is it the jumo 2000 pound uh 2000 pound 2000 horsepower one uh something along those lines yeah i'm not entirely sure what the exact engine is called roger uh now this is a fast warbird isn't it um i've got my list of warbird figures out here somewhere and it's if not the fastest it's right up there um, I know in DCS it is the fastest and it is a very fast bird, yes. Roger, but of course, um, it, with every, every plane, fighter plane or performance plane, um, it's give and take. Uh, so you want to add speed, you'll lose maneuverability. So it's not going to turn with a Spitfire, is it? Not even close. Yeah, Roger. Okay, let's just have a quick look at other things. I see guns. Um, I see four guns, two above the engine cowling and two in the wings. What are they? You have two MG131 13mm cannons in the engine cowling, and in the wing rivet you have two MG151 uh, 20mm cannons. Roger, and all of these for air to air, I'm guessing. It must be. Not air to air, the ground, whatever you want to shoot at. Roger, that's a pretty uh, nasty. Uh, okay, that's fine. What's that big uh, circling nozzle thing on the right of the engine cowling? Is that the air intake or turbo intake or. No one knows? Um, I think so, I'm not 100% sure. Mm, if anyone knows in the comments, let me know what this octopusy thing to the right of uh, the... Oops, got them wrong there. What uh, that is, I can't point at it, but the big sucky thing. Right, okay, Charles. Um, oh, and let me look at the landing gear. It is fairly wide. One thing I've learned is uh, narrow landing gear is a nightmare, like in the Spitfire. And the flaps are relatively big. Anyway, let's get on with our actual job. Let's get this cockpit done. Let's go to the left. Are you ready, first of all, Stahl? Sorry, yes, sir. Right, left, okay, let me check I've got labels on sweet, I haven't, yes I have. Okay, emergency equipment destruction, that sounds actually quite fun, what is that? I don't think it is implemented, but it is to destroy uh, your radio equipment in case you have to uh, land in behind enemy lines. Roger that, and if we go outwards towards the wing, we've got a big red pulley selector, non-functional, so I guess it's non-functional. It is a particularly fun one, though. What is um, it? So the Focke Wolf 90 has a secondary tank for something called MW50. Oh, is this uh, uh, like is a methanol water injection? Roger, hmm. Roger. So this tank, however, can be used alternatively as an additional fuel tank if you really want to increase your range and just give up max power for that. Um, and this little lever tells it whether it actually has fuel or MW50 in there. The thing about MW50 is it's not actually injected into the fuel lines. It is injected into the compressor uh, of the supercharger. Mm -hmm. So if you have that thing in the wrong position, you end up either spraying fuel into your supercharger or MW50 into your fuel lines, which is Sweet. Bad. Okay, Cap will no doubt do that at some point. Okay, fine. Um, now I'm just going to quickly deviate slightly. I've just looked out onto the flaps or the back of the trailing edge of the wing. There's a little number saying 60. Is that the degrees of the flap deviation? Exactly. You also have another indicator um, showing you whether your gear is down. It's the little sticks on the leading edge of the wing. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Very good. This is 1940s tech, of course. So, uh, okay, that's fine. Right now, um, the, uh, the non-functional lever, just uh, kind of uh, forward of that, we've got a primer pump. Uh, is that something that you squeeze or? Uh, basically, yeah. So in the beginning, you know, you need to get the fuel into the engine somehow, as long as it's not running yet, and that's what you use the primer pump. For. And you can hear it pumping. Pump, super cap, pump away. Okay, that's that. Uh, there's a non-functional thing there. Then we're going to go to standby as I try and work out what this is. FTFT -FT mode switch. Radio. Are we onto a radio here? 
on the yeah so that's a mode switch between um communication and just tuning mode for the radio not really gonna need that roger okay if we go towards the wing we've got control ah uh, that's the tuning knob oh yeah that's the tuning knob that's fine um upwind a bit we've got a uh schwanz lastig what's that a radio channel selector okay that's the same thing then isn't it um, yeah, we have a radio channel selector, and between that and the FT apps thingy, you also have the volume. Uh, so the radio channel selector in the in the Focke Wolf, it's, it's like in the BF109. You have four different preset channels. Yeah. You can only set them on the ground. Yep. Um, so the rest is just for fine tuning. And so the number one would be communication within a flight or a squadron. Number two within a larger group or several flights in one raid. Um, the triangle is for ATC, and the the square is a countrywide frequency which would only be used for really big rates or something along those lines. Roger, cool. Right, I'm just going to have to uh, set my control to move this throttle out of the way. One second. Right, okay, I can move the throttle out of the way now. What have we got under here? Uh, Kopflastig, is that that little switch? Yeah, it's Kopflastig and Translastig. Um, that is your trim. Oh, I see. Mm. Right, so these two things are for the trip. Right, trim. And what is it trim for? Uh, elevation. Uh, it's pitch trim. It only has pitch trim. Only has pitch trim. Well, this plane. technically, technically, I think it has. It definitely has a lot of trim. I think it has a lot of trim, but it can only be set on the ground, like in the BF109. Oh uh, right, yeah, okay. This is quite modern compared to the BF109, which has big spinny wheels and stuff to do the trim. It's quite yeah, modern. It's a significantly newer plane. Roger. Okay, if we go left or outbound from this stabilizer trim, what have we got here? Uh, that's your landing gear and flaps controls. So the outer three ones are the green one would be uh, landing position, yellow is takeoff position, and red is. In. And the same goes basically for the for the gear. Aus means um, you know gear down, mm -hmm. and ein means gear up. Why is the one of them got a cover? That's a safety bracket, so you won't accidentally retract the gear while on the ground. That's usually bad. Okay, understood. So we've got the gear. I need to memorize that. We've got the gear there. We've got the flaps there. Okay, Stahl, let's move forwards. Um, we've got a trim. That's the trim uh, meter, obviously, to show where your trim yeah. is set. Uh, so we need the electrics and stuff on for that to work, and the hydraulics, so we'll ignore that for now. Mm -hmm. If we go outbound, we've got, I don't know, what, like three little... Yeah, those are your gear and flaps indicators, the little lights, you'll see them once you turn on the plane. Roger, so you can use there, or you can look out and see the gear indicator red and the flaps. Okay, that's fine. Uh, then we've got the throttle lever, obviously down is down and up is up. There is some labels on the gear lever, like Aus, and Larsen, Steiger. Yeah, so Aus, Aus would be uh, the off position, Anlassen basically idle, mm -hmm. Steigen means climb position and start. <laughs> start. God damn it, I can't talk my own language. <laughs> Start um, would be takeoff or just full power. Roger, understood. Cool, that sounds good. And there's also a tourney grip. Uh, yes, that is like in a lot of other aircraft uh, for the gyroscopic gun sight to set the distance. Roger, we'll go over that later then. Okay. Um, there's also a push the talk button on the handle on the very outside. Roger. That's not functional. Yeah, okay, fine. Right, let's move upstream. We've got Zundung. I don't think I can say that. How do you say Zundung? Zundung. Okay, and I'm not sure what that is. What is that? That's your magnetos. Oh, okay. Yep. So Zundung means ignition. Right, okay, so we're going to use that in the startup. That's fine. If we go inbound, we've got uh, Ein and Aus, which is an yeah, M. That's the MW50 switch. You can just turn the system off and then you're not going to use it at all. Yeah, is it? Otherwise it'll automatic automatically uh, start pumping MW50 into the into the supercharger. And just to if you throttle up fast enough. Just to confirm again, the MW50 is like a booster, isn't it? It's like an ethanol booster, is that right? Uh, yeah, so it cools the incoming air in the compressor, which mm -hmm. means it can actually be compressed even more. And you can get higher boost pressures. And where would, where would you use that in a dogfight or a climb or? Um, yeah, primarily in dogfights and such. Uh, it will automatically, as long as it's on, it will automatically start injecting it as soon as the throttle is high enough, and it will give you a boost of, I think, up to plus three or four hundred horsepower. Wow, that's that's quite significant. That's a big, gross horsepower. Okay, fine. Right, let's go up. We've got Netz Nordschalter. What the hell is that? <laughs> Electric kill switch. 
It's an electrical electrical kill switch. Okay, that's fine in case we get a, I don't know, fire or something. Uh, instrument lights, brightness. Even I can do that one on my own. That's pretty cool. A nice modern little knob there, but you'll need a battery on for that. Okay, so we're moving to the front dash now. Um, why don't we do the A? Well, why don't we do the canopy while we're here? No, actually, scratch it. We'll do that last. Right, we're moving to the front dash now. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, Knopfzien. What's that? Yeah, that's an early IFF system. You can't use that between the aircraft, but it is used for ground-based radar to identify you. Roger. Okay, that's pretty cool. North of there, we have a steam gauge in kilometers. What the deuce is that? <laughs> that is your altimeter. Oh my god. So how it works, it's basically hundreds of meters, or tenths of kilometers technically. Um, and the number underneath the needle will go up and that's your kilometers. So basically you read what, what the number says and then you add on top what the gauge says. Right, so if I was a 0.9 and the gauge read 1, I'd be at 1900 meters, yeah? 1.9 exactly. kilometers. God, that's going to take a bit of getting used to. Right, um, let's go no let's go up again. We've got the air speed indicator question mark. Uh, yes, in KPH also it will give you some um, some additional information, you know, five hours over two hundred kmh. So, you know, drop the drop the landing gear above two hundred KPH and the landing couple may have flat. So under two hundred ninety five KPH. Mm -hmm. The white riding around the speedometer. Mm -hmm. Um there's actually altitudes for your critical critical speed where your airframe will actually take damage. So yeah, at gotcha. 9 kilometers, for example, you're somewhere just under 500 IAS, mm -hmm. while at 2 kilometers it's about 850. Okay, that's quite useful. So if I'm at 5 kilometers, I know not to go above 700 clicks per hour, basically. Okay. Yeah. It's a very ambitious gauge, 900 clicks per hour in a warbird. That's uh, nearly supersonic. Well, if you it? dive, it's, it's probably about doable. Okay, fine. Um, right, Strali Wally. Um, should we do the big gauges? Yeah, we'll do the big gauges in a big row because they're they're actually positioned pretty well. The big gauges. That's yeah. fairly ergonomic. I'm I'm excited about that. Right, let's go to the ADI here or artificial horizon. Um, so this uh, I can do this one, Strali. This one tells us the attitude of the aircraft, i.e., if we're rolling left or right, if we're pitching up or down. Um, it's useful if we're having low visibility for some reason. It's going to tell us um, how we are. I don't like the look of it. It looks black to me. Um, I hate these black ones. They're hard, I found them hard to use. We've also got a your slip gauge here that tells if we are slipping, our slip angle roughly here. Um, do we have a cage icon here somewhere? Or uh, Yes, it's the entire frame. You can spin that. If you see on the right side, there's a little white dot yeah. next to fest. So it's fastened. Yeah. If you that over 180 degrees it's loose which is loose okay so uh, just so people know uh, you'd want to cage it if you're on the ground and then once you take off you would want to also you would want to um, uncage it so it, it will be used uh, instruments like this don't uh, like uh, yes i was supposed to cage it actually when you're doing uh, aerobatics good lord really because you will you break it it's possible good lord these planes i tell you Right, anyway, let's carry on to the right. Uh, we've got Steigt and Sauer. Right, climb sink gauge. So this is our vertical speed indicator, and it's going to tell us in <laughs> meters per second? Me hundreds of meters per second? Do, doesn't do right if you look closely. Ah, I can't read it because my stupid track IR. Is that say meters per second? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's in meters per second, so it's going to tell us if we're climbing at 5 meters per second or descending at 10 meters per second. Again, exceptionally useful, just in all conditions, especially in bad weather, though. Okay. Uh, let's move right again. We've got our oh, now. This is a compass or a HSI or a mix between both. It's a HSI, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean it's it's just a simple compass, really. Um, so the compass itself is in principle fixed. The plane icon okay. in the middle moves. Um, you can twist the entire thing um, mm -hmm. to set whatever heading you want towards the top as a yep. as a wanted course. Yep, got that. Okay, that's fine. We'll go over that later. Fine. Next, um, we have something that I. Don't no that is supercharger pressure. Supercharger pressure in so generally that's what you'd fly uh, your you know, instead of your engine RPMs or something, that's usually what you'd fly your robots with, although you can also use engine RPM for the door. Roger, out of interest, is what's kilos per something? Kilos per square Um centimeter? that's some kind of technical atmosphere which is an a okay. pretty old unit that's not really used. We'll, we'll leave that then. And let's just go down and do the last large steam gauge. Use per minute times 100. No. Uh, RPMs uh, of the engine. 
Ja, yeah. so oh. used dann zwar Umdrehung oder Umdrehungen, so that's hundreds of RPMs. Hundreds of RPMs, they can rev up to 3,500, it's ambitious. Um, yeah, usually you're not going to go above, above, above 3,250. Roger, okay. I wish the Spitfire cockpit was this good. That is properly laid out for a pilot. I'm quite jealous of that. Right, back down we go. A big lever. Is that a gear lever? No, hang on. Before we get that, underneath the uh, altimeter, we've got a hand. That's all I can read. It looks like a gravity gear drop. That's exactly what it is. Yep, so if your gear can't release for some reason, um, because of you're out of air pressure or whatever drives that gear system, you can pull that handle and gravity will um, will take the gear out and hopefully lock them. Yeah, it will actually also you know have some springs to lock them in place. Oh, Roger. Although according to the manual, the old trick of just uh, bobbing your wings won't work. Okay, so you've got to do a proper spring loaded. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, um, is this the gear handle next, on the right? Uh, negative, you don't have a gear handle, that's the oh. buttons on the left behind the throttle, we already had those. Um, that is a fuel tank selector, although usually you'll just leave it in the up position where it uh, takes everything. So the up position will take whatever it can get then, yeah? Basically, it still has a certain order, uh, the Focke Wolf has two internal tanks, a front and a rear tank, it will usually empty the rear tank first, you can also carry um, an external fuel tank, and as I mentioned, you can fill up the MW50 with fuel instead. But you would have to set it in the mission editor, you can't actually do that on the fly. Over. Okay, uh, right, next to the right, we've got a standby, an MBG emergency mode handle. What the hell? Uh, it's an override for your engine control systems that would usually keep your engine in check and make sure it doesn't get damaged. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to get everything out of it for a short time and just mm -hmm. don't give a shit whether it's going to die afterwards. Uh, that might be worth using in a certain situation. Um, so is it pulled out, does that give you the full control, or pushed in give you the full control? Uh, those are all pulleys. Okay. Uh, right, next, to the right, is a handle called Rumpflast. Rumpflast, what's that? Yes, there's actually another one that's kind of hard to see that says Flugelast. Mm, so those are your emergency jettison uh, handles. So Rumpflast is your center line, and Flugelast are your wings. Okay, okay, that's hard to look at, but it's somewhere up there, folks. Okay, right, steam gauges galore. All nice, pretty ones the children would like. Uh, so, the first one is some pressure, kilograms per centimetre squared. Uh, hydraulic pressure brakes, question mark? Uh, it is a dual gauge. On the left, the yellow area would be your fuel pressure, and the right orange one is your oil pressure. Fuel pressure and oil pressure, right, okay. So, you don't want either of them to get low or high. Uh, right, um, I can't see past the stick. There we go. Next is the water the temperature. temperature. Yep, coolant temperature of the engine, so don't want that to get too high. Or so the usual operating temperature would be between 70 and 120 degrees. Anything above that is critical. Hey, firm. If you be anything like Cap's car, it will be constantly on the red line, constantly waiting to blow up. Right, okay. Next, in other degrees, oil temperature question mark? Exactly. You have a little white bracket in the right there that's kind of like the good uh, operating temperature during... I see. ...and then 30 year kind of shit out of like... Roger. Um, now it's prudent to point out as well that you don't want to run the engine hard when these are cold. I don't know if it's modelled with, mod with the Fokker, but... Um, yeah, you should, you should uh, warm it up. Uh, we're going to go through that before we taxi. Roger. Right, next we've got another pressure gauge. Any idea? Uh, yeah, that is your MW50 injection pressure, so when you see the needle jump between the little two white carrots, mm -hmm. uh, you know that MW50 is now being injected into your supercharger. Roger. Uh, next, we've got a fuel tank, question mark? Uh, yes. Cascade. So the funny thing about the Fokker Wolf is, since it has two fuel tanks but only one fuel gauge, you actually need to uh, switch between which uh, which fuel you want to Oh, so if you look a little bit further to the right, there's a switch that's mm -hmm. fun on Hinton. Yeah. Uh, that's how you select that. What's the neutral setting for? Well, oh. I'm not sure. It's pretty pointless. Roger. Okay. Uh, there's two warning lights. Um, oh, are the warning lights telling you which one you've got selected, or is Fawn and Hinton uh, lights? The warning lights tell you that your tanks are getting low, so Hinton starts lighting up when mm -hmm. your rear fuel tank, which is the first one that is emptied, mm -hmm. is at 10 litres. You need to switch your fuel selector to the front tank, and the front one starts lighting up as soon as your uh, front fuel tank is at 80 liters, which gives you about another 10 to 15 minutes of flight in economy settings. Roger. Okay. If I run out of one tank, will it automatically switch to the other? 
No, this is only for the gauge, isn't it? This is only for the gauge. Right, yeah. understood. Right, uh, we go south, and we've got uh, oxygen vector. I can't really see that. Yeah, oxygen flow indicator. You'll see that uh, go white and black uh, when you're actually breathing. Okay, cool. And then have we got total amount of oxygen below? Yeah, oxygen pressure and the oxygen valve to the right of that. And the oxygen valve there. Oh, look at that. Hey, hey, pressure goes up. That's pretty sweet. Right, very good. Um, now we probably best go um, quit at this point and go up. Something there, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, directly above the oil pressure, sorry about the oil, oil temperature. You'll have to move your head down to see that there's this little black wheel, which is for your cooling flaps. God. It's directly underneath the vertical speed indicator. Roger. Okay, we're going to have to take your word for that, shot. I simply don't have the track IR ability, but so there's a little wheel under there, and what does it do again? It's for your radiator flaps. Radiator flaps, and what would you have to do with them? Uh, well, open or close them. Um, if you open them, you're going to have better cooling, but more drag. So it's right. a bit of a Okay, that's fine. Right, uh, next, this, why don't we move up and look to the top left. I'm guessing this is going to be weapons, um, some kind of ammo counters or something? Yes, so the white strips are ammo counters. You can actually set them manually if you turn the little knobs on the knee. Yeah, gotcha. And so also, the big so black switch in the top right is your master arm. Big black switch in the top right. Big black switch in the top right. Why am I not oh, Actually, that? in the middle of oh, the, right. the white yep, strips. Master arm grouper, yes, okay. Yeah, and, and above the white armor counter strips, um, both directly above them and slightly more to the front, you will see these little pseudo radiation signs. Yeah. Um, those are gun firing check lights, so they will flicker as long as your guns are fired. Roger, and um, just to uh, check, these are not actually counting the ammo, these are estimators, aren't they? Um, well, yeah, they do technically count it. Like, every time you fire a bullet, it ticks down one, but mm -hmm. first you need to set it up correct. Roger. So okay. it will not give you single bullet amounts, obviously, since it's mm -hmm. just the white strip that goes down, but it should be pretty accurate. Okay, well, the MG151, the 151, the 131, and the 131. Okay, fine. Shelter is... that doesn't work. Uh, so at the top, we've got Rumpf, Rumpf, and Flugel. Um, what are those lights? Um, those are also uh, gun-firing control lights. Gun -firing. Rumpf means fuselage, and Flugel is a wing. Roger. Okay, understood. Right, that's all pretty simple. Next, we're going to move on to the gun sight. So we've got the gun sight glass up here, and this is going to be like a little HUD projector of some kind, or a gun sight projector, isn't it? Yes. Now, I'm clicking something at the top. What's that red thing I'm clicking? Uh, it's a night filter, mm. in case it's just too bright. Yep, understood. Also, in case your gun sight dies, you do have a backup gun sight. If you lean ever so slightly to the left, you can see the little Y shape. If you line that up with the uh, with that little tip on the left of the actual uh, sight, then you can just use that as an iron sight. I'm sorry, I missed that show. I I've, I've saw the red thing, and I didn't see anything you could use as an iron sight. Where's that? Oh, the Y thing. I can't, exactly. I can't do anything um, with it. I can't click it or anything. Well, no, it's just an iron sight in case your actual sight dies. But it's not in the middle of... It's on the left, though. Yeah, you need to lean slightly to the left. And then you line it up uh, with the little pointy thing in front of it. Good lord. Yeah, oh, I see. Right. Yeah, so that there is an iron sight. That must be hard. I hate these little sights they have. I, uh, the, so, mm, okay. I just really despise them. Right, anyway, um, then we've got uh, some uh, some paper showing um, the wingspan of a Boeing and a Liberator and a, what the hell is a Boeing? A Lancaster, a Halifax, a Boo Fighter, Mosquito, and so on. And a, oh, wait, wait, a Rush is a Jäger. A Rush is a Jäger. Russian hunter, something? Yeah, fighters. Um, a Boeing would probably be a Flying Fortress. Boeing would be a Flying Fortress, nice. And I actually find it kind of funny because you have all these different Allied planes, Spitfire, Mustang, Hurricane, Thunderbolt, Lightning, and then they're like Russian fighters. <laughs> yeah, that is quite cool. All the same at 10 meters. Very good. Um, okay, and then we go below. Um, what's this big turning knob? Is this swing spare? Yeah, exactly. That's your wingspan. So, wingspan. so we haven't got the gun sight on at the moment, so you can't see if it's doing anything, but this allows us to set the wingspan, which we'll go through in the gun tutorial. Okay, let's go to the right now. We've got, is that an on and off switch? I'm struggling to see that a little bit. But. Uh, that's for your gun sight gyro, yeah. Oh, so this is the gyro, is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so uh, basically it's usually kind of caged to bore sight, if you like. 
um, unless you turn the gyro on like so and then it will be gyro driven but we'll go through all that above the gyro switch is some sort of meter and i can't really tell what that is that is your distance indicator it is connected to the twist grip that is going to be throttle. impossible to see God. You're not usually going to need to see that. Roger, you do it by eye. Okay, now all behind this, there is a gauge we've missed, but I've got uh, really no idea of what that is. Or I can't really see it. Is that something uh, of importance? That's a very common instrument in German World War II aircraft. It is an early navigation system, early radio navigation. Mm -hmm. You just preset that to one specific radio station, and it will tell you the direction with the vertical needle and the distance with the horizontal needle. So you can see nahe towards the top. Uh -huh. That means near, so the closer you get, uh, the more this needle rises. Mm. In the center, you also have additional light. Uh, that's if you, that lights up if you go over marker beacons. You have that oh, same thing in things like the MiG-15, MiG-21 and such. Does this, does this system work in DCS? I don't remember using one of these. Uh, it does, but you would have to set it up properly. Um, mm. So usually this thing is set to 30 megahertz, if I remember correctly. Mm. And if you don't set it up correctly with the air filter that you're using in the mission editor, then it's mm. not going to work. We'll probably leave that. It doesn't sound very usable. Daily flight. Okay, Star, that's gun side done. That's all very beautiful. Right, let's move on to behind the stick, shall we? Let's see what we've got. Okay, all looks relatively simple. Usually this is bombing and stuff, but let's see. So on the left, I can't pronounce that, I'm not going to try. So what's the one on the left, top left? Uh, that is for your rockets to arm them. That's just an arming for rockets on or off. Okay, and on the right, we've got rocket emergency release. Is that dumping them? Yes, also these rockets to come in these big casings. Okay. You might also want to dump them afterwards because they cause a lot of drop. Roger. Then below that, we've got four lights. What are they? Uh, those are um, indicators for stuff you have on the fuselage or under the wing. Roger, indicator, yep, fine. And then we've got, I'm guessing, as a bomber, bomb arm slash selector of some kind. Exactly. So, at the same selector, you will find an BF 109. On the right side, that's for horizontal bombing. On the left side, is for dive bombing. Yep. And MV means mit Verzögerung, so that is with delay, and LV is ohne Verzögerung, so without delay. And else is just off or neutral? Yep. Roger, so, so sorry, left was dive, Wagenrech was straight bombing you. Yep. Right, got to remember that, okay. Um, we've got the rudder pedals there, and we've got the stick, um, okay, on the stick, what have we got? We've got that's non-functional, that's all non-functional for clicking, so we're not even going to go over that in that case then. Uh, you'd have to bind it. That's fine, we'll do that. Right, uh, so let's carry on where we left off, front right dash, and we're moving down and right, now we've got our Come, uh, is that a clock? It's just a clock, isn't it? Clock and stopwatch. Clock and ping, stopwatch. Okay, and we can start that and stop that. Okay, okay. that's cool, useful for something. Right, I'm struggling with my tracker at the moment. So a big ladder kind of gauge on the right. What the deuce is this? Oh, hello. Open it up and you've got some arming fuses, question mark. That's your main circuit breaker panel. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, your flaps, trimmer, artificial horizon power is the first one. Then you have your landing gear power, your your heating power, mm -hmm. heater and such. Excellent. Yeah. Um, then where it says FUG25A, that is your IFF system. Oh, um, FT is your radio. Yeah. Uh, you have instrument lights, gun sight indicators and such, and your generator and your battery. And so is that a battery? Yes, it's, mm -hmm. it's an old expression. I wouldn't use that today, but yes, it. Okay, um, big turny wheel. Is that for the canopy? Yeah, just be careful not to hit the red thing because that's going to shed us in your canopy. Oh right, fuck me! What if you catch your sleeve on that star? That was horribly <laughs> positioned. Bad uh, idea. Okay, I'm going to turn turn the canopy because I can. Mm, Question scratch out. I can't. There it is. A turn, super cap turn. Okay, that's really hard to turn, and I'm just not going to do it, but we'll take your word for it, Star. Uh, right, really struggling with the track IR now, so let's see what we've got down here. We've got some small circuit breakers. No, we've got something fly. What's that? I can't really read it. It's starter switch oh, cover. Um, oh, so it's a cover and then starter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's just to start the engine, yeah. Okay, that's fine. And then... Kraftstoffpumpen. What is that? That's your, that's your secondary circuit breaker panel so the first one is your nav lights the c1 and the other one are your fuel pumps so that's e14 is your front uh fuel fuel pump e13 is your rear fuel fuel pump mm -hmm. 
E85 is for um, external fuel, and the E96 is for your MW50 slash extra fuel if you have it in there. Very good. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's nice and simple. Nice to see it. So simple. Really is a lovely cockpit. Um, yeah. Right, I may even fly this plane at some point, which is good. Right, now back further, we have um, a non-functional thing, question mark, with those little well, wheels. the left knob actually works if you look where it's sticking out. Um... That is a correction for your gun sight, uh, oh. depending on the altitude that you're flying. God, I don't think I'm going to be using that star. Oh yeah, I see, little knob. Correction for the gun sight. Okay, fine. Uh, and then one more thing at the back. What the deuce is that? Big, big oxygen emergency knob. It's non-functional by the looks of it. Okay, that's fine. Right. Um, when you close the canopy, do you have to lock it or is it just closed? Sorry, so canopy locking? No, you do not have to lock the canopy as long as it's closed. It's Roger, right. Anything else in the cockpit you can think of pointing out? Well, we missed one little thing, but that's pretty useless. Um, that is your throttle lock at your left foot. Oh, hello, throttle lock. So I would, if I wanted to keep a certain throttle, you'd do that, would you? It's a bit weird. Yeah, not entirely sure what you'd actually use that for, but it's a... Mm. Okay, fair enough. Right, that is the cockpit. Um, I hope you found that useful, and we'll see you later.